Mrs. Britain is on. Welcome to my channel. As you know by now, on this channel, we study the Word of God and we have begun with the book of the Revelation. Although this earth is in is experiencing um, peace relatively, there are still questions which bother the populations of this earth. Where are we heading? Will we self-destruct? Friends, I want to tell you that all the questions you are asking, you can find the answers in the book, the Bible, and particularly the Revelation. Because this earth is heading towards its divine destination. So I want to invite you those of you who have just logged into this program, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and share and invite a friend. Tell them, come, Mrs. Britton is on and you are learning so much from the Word of God. I also want to invite you to have your Bible close by. As I say repeatedly, it is important that you read the Bible for yourself. If you cannot read it, there are audio Bibles available or maybe someone, some way can read for you. But it is always better that you read for yourself, you know, so that you are not misled into thinking otherwise than what the Bible teaches. But you can depend on this channel to learn exactly what the Bible teaches. Now, I want to invite you to join me in this study, and I know that you will be blessed. Let us pray as we begin. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You are the creator of heaven and earth, of things that are visible and invisible. This earth is yours and everything that is in it. And Lord, we know that you have a divine destiny for this earth. One day you will return and you will reestablish your kingdom of glory and your kingdom of peace. I pray that each of us who listen and tune in to this channel weekly will surrender our lives to Jesus so he can save us. Thank you for being with us as we study today. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Friends, our topic for today is from lesson 29. Those who follow the Lamb. Those who follow the Lamb. We will begin by identifying the three chief characteristics of the 144,000 saints. Let's read of those three characteristics in Revelation chapter 14 verses 1 to 5. Revelation chapter 14, 1 to 5, and I am reading from the New American Standard Bible, and this Bible is on my device. Then I looked, and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having his name and the name of his father written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of loud thunder, and the voice which I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne, and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been purchased from the earth. These are the ones who have not been defiled with women, 
for they have kept themselves chaste. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These have been purchased from among men as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And no lie was found in their mouth. They are blameless. How are these characteristics related to the description of the end time saints in Revelation 14 verse 12? So let's go to Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. It reads, Here is the patience of the saints. Or, here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and have their faith in Jesus. So friends, what are the three characteristics which we can identify the 144,000 saints with? They have kept themselves pure, meaning that they were not defiled with spurious doctrines. No. They follow the Lamb wherever he goes. As Revelation 14 verse 12 says, they have their faith in Jesus. And they are truthful. They believe in the truth. And they keep the truth and are blameless. Revelation chapter 14, verses 4 and 5. These verses are a description of the 144,000 that align with God's last day people who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Although they experienced the fullness of Satan's wrath in the final crisis, they have remained firm because of their close relationship with Jesus. We read in Revelation chapter 14 verses 1 to 5 that the 144,000 saints have not defiled themselves with women. Let's read Revelation 17 verse 5. It says, And on their forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. The Bible shows in Revelation chapter 17 verse 5 that the 144,000 saints have not defiled themselves with women. What does that mean? How is the purity of character related to the fact that they are the redeemed of the earth as the first fruits to God? Let's read again Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. These are the ones who have not been defiled with women, for they have kept themselves chaste. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These have been purchased from among men as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Sexual immorality is a symbol of unfaithfulness to God. I want to share this sentence again with you. Sexual immorality is a symbol of unfaithfulness to God. Revelation chapter 17 verse 5 talks about the end time harlot, Babylon, and her daughters, with whom all people of the world commit fornication. Let's read Revelation chapter 18 verse 3 on this. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the passion of her immorality and the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality with her and the merchants of the earth 
have become rich by the wealth of her sensuality. Friends, in spite of all the spurious doctrines which the world embraces from symbolic Babylon and her daughters, the 144,000 will remain faithful and loyal to Christ and they will resist the defiling relationships with Babylon and the apostate churches. The 144,000 follow the Lamb wherever he goes. The 144,000 are further described as the ones who have been redeemed from among men as the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. In ancient times, Israel, the first fruits, were the best fruits of the harvest offered to God. Let us read about that in Numbers chapter 18, verse 12. All the best of the fresh oil and all the best of the fresh wine and of the grain, the first fruits of those which they give to the Lord, I give them to you. So friends, in ancient Israel, the first fruits were the best fruits from the harvest. And so the 144,000 saints are referred to as the first fruits of the harvest offered to God. The word first fruits can refer to save the people as distinct from those in the world. Now let us read James 1 verse 18. James 1 verse 18 it says, in the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. But in Revelation, the 144,000 are clearly a special group because they will be translated without seeing death. Let's read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 52. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we all all will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed so friends according to revelation the 144,000 referred to as the first fruits offered to God really means that these 144,000 will not experience death. Oh no. Instead, they will be translated to heaven. They will be changed, of course. At the last trumpet, they will be changed, clothed with immortality and they will be translated to heaven and this is exactly why that group of people at the end of time that group is referred to as the first fruits offered to God thus they are the first fruits of the larger harvest of the saved through all the ages Let's look at Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 to 16. Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and sitting on the cloud was one like a son of man, having a golden crown on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple, crying out with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud. Put in your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap 
has come because the harvest of the earth is ripe. Then he who sat on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was reaped. Friends, the Lord has set apart for him a people that is godly. He has set apart those who are godly for himself. This consecration to God and, and separation from the world is plainly and positively enjoined in both the Old and New Testaments. There is a wall of separation which the Lord himself has established between the things of the world and the sanctified unto himself. The calling and character of God's people are peculiar. Their, their prospects are peculiar. And these peculiarities are, are what distinguish them from all other people. Remember we read that they follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They have not defiled themselves with spurious doctrines. They keep the commandments of God. Their faith is in Jesus. All God's people upon the earth are one body. The same injunctions which, which rested upon ancient Israel rest upon God's people now to be separate from the world. The world does not follow the Lamb. The world does not have faith in Jesus. The world believes in all spurious doctrines. Not so with God's people. God's people are separate from the world. Just as Israel, ancient Israel, was separate from the world, in like manner, God's people are separate from the world. The great head of the church has not changed, and Jesus is the head of the church. We studied that at the very beginning of the book of Revelation. So the experience of Christians in these days is much like the travels of ancient Israel. Though the 144,000 are without fault, this does not mean that they do not need forgiveness. Of course, they do. Over and over and over again, God's people need forgiveness. Of course. However, they are loyal to God. They are loyal to God. Sin does not have dominion over them. They are not servants or slaves to sin. They may sin. They will sin. But they go to God repeatedly for forgiveness. And they are loyal to Jesus. It's, it means the kind of loyalty in which one would rather die than sin. The 144,000 trust Jesus to keep their robes clean. Now let us go on to Revelation chapter 7 verse 14. Let's read what it says. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them. Hallelujah. Jesus protects them. He keeps them. He forgives them. Because these people, the saints of God, are loyal to him. Yes, they are uncompromising in their obedience to the one who redeemed them. Let us read again Revelation chapter 14 verses 4 and 5. These are the ones who have not been defiled with women. For they have kept themselves chaste. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These have been purchased from among men as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And no lie was found in their mouth, for they are blameless. So friends, it is God's righteousness after all. Yes, my friends. As we close, 
I invite you to pledge your allegiance to God. Obey Him and walk in His paths. He is a faithful God who keeps His promises. He will spread His tabernacle over you and keep you faithful. He will forgive you of your sins as you confess and repent. Wouldn't you choose to be among God's faithful people? His people are not subject to doctrines of devils. Instead, they are loyal and faithful to Him. They keep the commandments and their faith is in Jesus. Will you choose to be one of God's people today? Will you choose to be faithful to God? Will you do so? I pray that you will choose to be loyal to Jesus. Friends, this was a very short study today, those who follow the Lamb. And it is linked, this study is linked to two previous studies um, from lessons 27 and 28, lessons 27 and 28. Yes, God has a people, a faithful, clean, loyal, and righteous people, even in these days and until the end of time. You and I can choose to be among that group of people. God is faithful. He will spread his tabernacle over us. He will keep us pure and holy. And when he comes, he will take us into his kingdom of glory. I want to thank all of you who have taken the time to view this channel and to listen and follow today's lesson. I encourage you to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and share with a friend. And remember, if you have comments and questions, write them down below. I also want to remind you that all the texts I have used in this video, I will place them below in the description so you can go and read them for yourself. As we close today, I want us to bow our heads and just thank God for giving us the option to choose Him and be faithful to Him. Let us pray. Dear God, You do not force us to make a decision for You. You have placed before us life and death. Your Word explains to us so simply and so plainly what You expect of us. And we thank You, Lord, that today we can choose life. We can choose loyalty to Jesus. We can choose to be faithful and to have our faith in Jesus. Lord, I pray that all who view today's lesson will be impressed by the Holy Spirit to choose to be among God's people. Amen and amen. Until next time, when our topic will be salvation to our God and the Lamb. Goodbye.